My name is Kelly Ahn, and I've lived in uh, the metro Atlanta area for over 42 years. I speak on behalf of the Atlanta Comfort Women Memorial Task Force, which is a diverse group of over 25 community leaders representing over 10 ethnic backgrounds, including Japanese, Australian, Filipino, and Korean, among others. The task force would like to donate a World War II memorial to the city of Brookhaven. The memorial honors over 200,000 girls and women from, from at least 13 countries, including Korea, China, and Japan, who are, uh, who are trafficked, sexually enslaved, and most eventually killed by the Japanese army. The Japanese army called these girls and women uh, comfort women euphemistically. The Japanese, uh, what we would like to do is that the Japanese army, uh, when they called these women comfort women, uh, this comfort women history uh, is the largest example of systematic government controlled sex slavery in modern history. The reason why this history is so important and relevant today is because the comfort woman story opens a bridge to the present day issues of trafficking, sex slavery, violence against women. The city of Brookhaven is already a leader in the fight against sex trafficking through its involvement with the We're Not Buying It campaign. And even with the program tonight at OLA Catholic Church, this issue, the comfort woman issue, is not about Japan bashing. It is apolitical. It is fundamentally about safeguarding the human rights of all women. That's why we have to care about the comfort women. Mayor Ernst, city council members, where others in Atlanta have failed to meet the challenge of honoring the comfort women and squandered an opportunity to fight against sex trafficking and violence against women, the task force hopes that the city of Brookhaven will stand proudly and have all the world take notice that on May 23, 2017, the city of Brookhaven became the first American city in the Deep South to approve an installation of a Comfort Women Memorial. Finally, the task force pledges to the Comfort Women, we will never forget, we will teach the truth. Thanks so much for caring about the Comfort Women. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor Ernst and respected members of the council. My name is John Park. I am here to support the city of Brookhaven to host and install a memorial in honor of hundreds of thousands of young girls and women who were forced into sexual slavery by the Imperial Japanese Army before and during World War II. As the council and mayor deliberate to come to an important decision this evening, I would like to share with those who are gathered here the significance of what we are trying to accomplish by erecting the memory of a young girl in this city, even though it is 72 years after the war has been ended. First, it is to be a historical memorial, and as such, we want to remember the sufferings of the young girls and women who were subjected to sexual abuse during World War II. By doing so, we want to raise awareness of the unacceptable atrocities forced upon them. Even after the war, the ordeals of these women were hidden to public for another 46 years. Only after 1991, they broke the silence, and we began to hear their stories. Although their testimonies are diverse and at times inconsistent due to elapsed time and suppressed memories, the aggregate record they offer is compelling and irrefutable. This memorial should serve as a reminder that no one should have, no one should have to suffer such conditions again. Second, we humbly must acknowledge the challenge of understanding full and true history. For instance, we will probably never know exactly how many young girls and women were coerced to become comfort women. Some historians also dispute how directly the Japanese military was involved in recruiting, establishing, and maintaining the comfort women system. Yet the evidence make it clear that a large number of women were held against their will 
and subjected to horrific brutality. What lies at the core of the Kung Fu Woman issue is our outcry against such inhumane system that exploits these vulnerable young girls and women. This memorial is about raising awareness to women's dignity and human rights. Contrary to some concerns raised, it was never intended to be about Japanese bashing or to discriminate or even bully the Japanese people living in our community. Acknowledging past wrongs takes courage and, and healing often takes a long time. However, currently there are only 38 surviving comfortable women and most of them are in their 90s. So before the time runs out, we hope that installing the memory to this city prevents an uh, presents an opportunity for us to learn an important lesson from history and continue to strengthen the movement to end the sexual violence and human trafficking in the future. Thank you very much. I, time sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If uh, Sandra, to be you know to be fair to all uh, meetings, and can you read the uh, the uh, public com uh, public comment oh, um, rules? So I will wait. Give you time. Do you have those with you? Yeah. Handouts and displays should be approved by the city clerk prior to the meeting. Prior to speaking, each spe speaker will complete and speak card and present it to the clerk before the beginning of the public comment portion of the meeting. The public comment portion of the meeting will last 30 minutes, and speaker cards will be accepted on first come, first serve basis. Each speaker will be allowed three minutes to speak and will identify themselves by name, address, if applicable, their organization before be beginning their presentation. In order to respect the time of each speaker and the rights of the citizens who wish to speak, ne neither the mayor nor the council member nor a city Brookhaven staff sh shall, shall cut a speaker's time by engaging in dialogue, dialogue, answering questions, responding to individual issues, concerns, or questions raised by speakers. Only after all speakers have, have been heard and the public comments portion of the meeting has been closed will the mayor and council will be addressed any concerns raised by the speakers. Any members of the public who does not get an opportunity to speak will be allowed to speak first at the, sub, at the next meeting and the clerk will hold their speaker call until the next meeting. Yeah. And, and it was Christian. And please hold your applause to the end uh, to, so we can explain really get through this. Yes, thank you. Ma'am. Thank you. I know I should have uh, read this small print before <laughs> I'm prepared to come and speak to you this evening. I'll be very brief. My name is Heather Fenton. I'm here to speak on behalf of those who are supporting the artwork. Uh, I'd just like to commend you, commend your vision in, wel in considering welcoming this artwork that pays respect to women of all nationalities, including my own and their Korean sisters. It lends something beautiful to something that is so ugly. It will be a place to reflect on the horrors of the past while energizing us for the battle of today. And I congratulate you for your enlightened consideration of this sensitive and thoughtful artwork. Thank you. Thank you. Again, please hold all public comment and applause and, and such. Good evening, uh, Mayor Ernst, uh, Council Members. Helen Kim Ho, um, a member of the Atlanta Comfort Women Memorial Thank, uh, Task Force. I actually wanted to just share quickly uh, one of our members, Deacon Antonius Anaguera, he's actually a member of Our Lady uh, of the Assumption Catholic Church, where your police department is co-hosting an event on fighting human trafficking. Um, otherwise, um, he is participating and is a part of it. Otherwise, he would have loved to be here. He wanted to be sure that I shared um, his testimony. Um, when Helen asked me to join the Comfort Women Memorial Task Force team, I was a bit hesitant because I didn't know much about the issue and thought it was more a political quarrel between two countries. But when I did a little survey about the issue uh, and learned more about it, I realized that the issue is bigger and that it seems um, and is more personal than I thought. 
it's more about honoring the victims and most importantly preventing it from happening again in any forms of physical and sex abuse. Human trafficking is a social issue that should be eradicated from our society, especially after it dawned on me that the story my mother told me when I was growing up about an incident when she was almost abducted. Uh, Deacon Antonius is Indonesian American, by the way, uh, almost abducted by a Japanese soldier when she was about 11 years old, and her father, my grandpa, was beaten by other Japanese soldiers at his bicycle store. Fortunately, my mother escaped the abduction. It would have changed my life. I would have never been born in her family. Perhaps she would have never had married and have a family life, like most of the other comfort women victims. She is buried um, in a cemetery in Duluth, but I just want to thank you and let you know that there are actually people living here in Brookhaven and in the surrounding areas that are children and grandchildren of some of these women, and we've all been impacted in some way. So thank you so much for your leadership and consideration. I tried. <laughs> Mayor Ernst, distinguished council members. I just want to, my name is Sumi Kim, and I am um, a longtime resident of the state of Georgia and a 25 year resident of the city of Alpharetta. And I'm a member of the Atlanta Comfort Women Memorial Task Force. My statement really here is very simple it's one of gratitude, it's one of Thanks for each of you for um, taking very seriously this um, donation of heart work regarding the Atlanta, sorry, not the Atlanta, but the Comfort Women. I'm embarrassed to tell you that um, despite the fact that I am of Korean descent and I'm a very proud um, American, but also a very proud Korean, that my knowledge of the Comfort Women history was very... Um, was very low. Um, it is only through this issue, really, um, supporting um, this history that has been muted. One that is being tried to that is in the midst of being um, erased. That uh, I've learned so much, um, and I've learned really that connection to what's happening really in our midst, in this city, and in our state. I humbly just ask you for um, your, your, your consideration, and I thank you for even getting to this point, for your courage and your commitment to address the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yep, yeah, I will. Okay, is there any other public comment? I can't see the... There was a Sat Yam Barakade. She, she left, okay. Any other public comment? Seeing that, I'm closing public comment and going into new business. Uh, one, resolution ID, consideration approval for resolution to approve accepting donation of artwork. Um, staff, you want to... First, I think this is an exciting time for uh, uh, the city of Brookhaven. Uh, at least in my short tenure here, I don't believe we've accepted artwork before. Uh, in many cases, the cities are defined by its artwork and how it goes about doing those things. So the uh, resolution is a administrative matter but it's definitely overlaid with a much bigger policy and social implication for the community. Uh, we view the resolution not only as the administrative matter accepting the gift, but also as the uh, a reflection of the the culture and values of the city and the city council. So we do recommend approval. First uh, comment I'd put is obviously uh, council member Park, uh, John Park, uh, uh, District 2 is not here today. Uh, he uh, would have loved and been here. He had a previously scheduled um, trip before this. Um, 
but he didn't want to hold it up, and he didn't want um, you guys sat here for a very long zoning matter. He didn't want that zoning matter to be held up by moving the meeting forward. Um, and so he he graciously said, you know, guys, you guys I know what you guys are going to do, um, and go forward. Um, he has texted me multiple times a day, making sure everything is okay um, on his trip. And uh, but it wanted everyone to know that you know, obviously he's uh, he's the one who brought this to our attention, and is extremely supportive. And he wishes he was here. He could not be here, but um, I could safely say I know how he would vote. Um, uh, this um, acceptance uh, is probably you know is a we've had many many historic t uh, um, times here in Brookhaven since, since I've been mayor. We've approved plans. We've approved zoning matters. We've approved um, a lot of stuff that you know while very important um, probably doesn't rise to this level that we've that we're diving into now. Um, so you know, again, uh, I humbly support, uh, ask that you know, the rest of the council, which I think I know where you guys are going, that you support this. Um, this uh, brings a uh, a historical con. Uh, let me back up a little. I'm I'm a history major from Emory. That's my my degree is that. And so you study history all the time. It's a time to to how to how do you lead in the future. And so this is you know again, you study history. To lead the future and studying the history of the comfort women to talk about the future and the leading on how we go uh, with, with sex trafficking um, and which has been a problem for many you know for a millennium and uh, hopefully this will you know start the education process uh, some more uh, so again I humbly ask you guys to support this Lily first yeah, and sure. go are y'all ready for a motion? Yes. Um, I have a question first. This is a momentous moment. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be appropriate for each council member to make a comment before we actually vote? Oh, well, of course. Really? Yeah, we, we, well, you first, we first have to have a motion to approve yeah. before we can actually vote on something. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution to approve acceptance of the donation for artwork. And I second. Yeah. Is there discussion? Lindley. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all have taken my breath away, not just tonight, but time and again concerning this issue. I am so grateful to all of you. I am humbled to have the privilege of voting in favor of our government recognizing the suffering of the Korean comfort women, their loved ones, their communities, and the Korean people. Um, I, I wish to cast this vote this evening in honor of the 38 surviving comfort women and in loving honor of my beautiful Korean American nieces who are watching tonight on the video. Hannah O oh and Lily O, oh, I'm casting this vote for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Thank you to uh, the Comfort Women Memorial Task Force for your patience in educating me. I'm, I'm so grateful and forever changed by what I've learned. I will look forward to seeing this, um, this memorial in place. I will look forward to enjoying it, sharing it, sharing the story, because it's a way of telling the story and obviously a way of, of honoring it. Um, thank you for giving Brookhaven this opportunity to recognize this human rights tragedy that really bel belongs to all of us as a global community. I am grateful. Thank you. Thanks. Next down the line. So I think that um, there are some in the audience, and maybe people who are watching, who might not know some of the details. So I want to ask city staff to uh, to give me a brief overview of of where this statue is going to be what it's going to look like if you can do we have a picture of, of the uh, monument the statue if we don't that's okay it, you can it, describe it it's been a uh, national secret up until tonight <laughs> uh, the the artwork is very attractive uh, we'll get a uh, photo out with the uh, a release that later this evening 
Uh, its location will be in the city park that we're still discussing internally. Uh, it's, it's relatively small. It's no bigger than a Volkswagen bus. It's not a massive piece that you're going to see from space. Uh, but uh, we're working with the Comfort Women organization uh, on the appropriate landscaping that will accompany the art. It isn't just a piece of art. It's the interpretation of the art as well as a city message uh, uh, related to the issue on the uh, recognizing and reporting uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking in today's state and providing contact information for our police department and other social service agencies that can help in that regard. So it's not only the artwork in itself and its historical significance, but it's also an opportunity to bring awareness to an issue that we are grappling with as a, as a country. Great, thanks. Um, I echo Lindley's sentiment about feeling very honored that y'all have come to Brookhaven to uh, uh, donate this artwork to us. Um, you know, I, I really do hope that, that um, placing this statue is remembered as a step towards bringing harmony in everyone who's affected in this tragedy of, of, of the comfort women. Um, you know, it, it is... Uh, the, the step of recognizing that history has done some horrible things in the past, but we must shine light on that history so that we are aware of it, discuss it, learn from it, so that it never happens again. It is not about um, any nationality feeling that they should be shamed or have, um, you know, or that this is a light on a terrible moment in the past. This is a recognition that there was a great number of women who really were dealt a horrible state of affairs. And I'm glad that you all have chosen, chosen Brookhaven and look forward to it being here. So thanks very much. Now, I'm honored that you would have considered Brookhaven um, we, um, as Dr. Ahn uh, appropriately pointed out, um, we do have a history for being active in taking a stance on this issue. Um, and you're right, this is not country bashing. This is simply, well, maybe not simply, but this is making a very expressive a statement about situations that went on in the past. I'll give an example. If any of you have ever been to Auschwitz in Germany and been to the concentration camp, you know how impactful it is to walk in on that. That's not German bashing. That's simply saying, hey, as a society, we have to look at what we've done in the past, and we have to be reminded that this is something we cannot move forward with in the future. It's unacceptable. I look at the Comfort Woman's um, statue as making that statement. We have an opportunity to put the message out there that, yes, atrocities have taken place. Ills have been put on far too many people. We have to be cognizant of this, and it has to be ever-present. And like John, I was a history major. And one of the things you always hear when you're a history major is that history repeats itself. And we have to make sure that history does not repeat itself here. And how do we do that? We have to keep front and center what the issue is and keep reminding people who may not be aware or have the, have the deep-rooted feeling and just get comfortable. No, no, it's unfortunately a human trait that humans can go to that level. We have to make sure that we keep this ever-present. When I was raising my kids, I always asked them the simple question, what's the right thing to do? It was the modus operandi in our house. Uh, the right thing to do here is pretty obvious. This is a moral issue. We're taking a moral stance and making a loud statement that this is a project that we get behind wholeheartedly. And it's my desire in the long term, uh, after we get this planted, we finish our Peachtree Creek Greenway, which is going to be part of the Beltline. I'd love to move this monument to the Peachtree Creek Greenway, which is going to be a phenomenally traveled path and make a really loud statement about who we are as Brookhaven and what our moral position is on this. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very, very much. 
uh, for uh, bringing this to us. And um, Thank you. Yeah, we have all spoken. Any other comments? Uh, that being said, all those in favor say aye. 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 It passes three nothing. Done. Yeah. Yeah. We we will take a five minute